I will then hand it over to Jeremy. Hi. <clears throat> Hi. <laughs> Forgive me. Um, thank you very much, Boris, and thank you very much for having me back. Um, and it's great to have the chance to uh, talk to this very knowledgeable um, crowd again. Uh, and also to to thank Fission. Um, I, I, I was very surprised, Boris, earlier on, I think you said the rest of the Fission team by accident, and I'd always imagined that there were hundreds of you, so that's that's shattered an illusion there. Um, but uh, even more stunning, the, the work that you've done. And from my perspective, um, Fission is, is largely an incredibly simple API with um, like nine or 10 calls that correspond roughly to the POSIX file system calls that you know, one's familiar with from other platforms. And then behind that, I have a very shaky understanding of all of the magic. Um, but uh, but I've, I've long been interested in IPFS um, and uh, similar technologies, but kind of disappointed when you try to uh, get your friends uh, to adopt the technologies too, that it requires them, uh, or has until now required them to adopt a new browser and uh, high hurdles. Um, whereas from my perspective, Fission have put just enough servers in place to make a radically serverless architecture like this work. And even though there are servers involved, you know, DNS certificates involved and so on, uh, DNS records involved, um, from my point of view, it feels like and behaves like the serverless platform that we'd always kind of hoped from those early experiments with IPFS, Beaker Browser, and, uh, and so on. Um, so working with the system has been, uh, has been great fun. Uh, it's been from quite an early stage of the API. Um, I was going to try and screen share just to uh, show you uh, the, uh, a, a, a reminder of the TiddlyWiki on fish and functionality. Uh, so uh, right now it's, um, uh, 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 you, can, you can visit it and try it out at tiddlywiki.fission.app. Um, but I'm in the process of updating it to work with the latest version of the SDK. And sometime before the call, I discovered a part that I hadn't updated. So um, there'd be bugs, which is uh, what, that, uh, uh, what that flashing uh, mark is supposed to indicate. So if you're familiar with Fission, you have to uh, log into it on each device. So in fact, on this browser, I'm logged into Fission um, in the browser and therefore into Fission Drive, which is the um, file uh, browsing application. Uh, uh, there we go. So I can uh, uh, browse my files like on, like on a normal filing system. If I visit tiddlywiki.fission.app, I need to explicitly authorize with Fission. And this is a, a dance that's very familiar. You click a link, you get taken to Fission. You get asked to confirm what you've been asked to do. Click yes, and then get taken back. And now this uh, uh, this page has access uh, to my fission folder. Uh, and I say page, in fact, behind the scenes, it is actually a tiddlywiki. Um, so the capabilities that you see here are built out of tiddlywiki primitives that me and other people can build, uh, can use to build other things on top of fission. Um, even though this is the, uh, well, this seemed to be the most obvious uh, thing to do first. So here I get a, a very simple means to, to browse the filing system. And in my private folder, I've got a blog and my public folder is empty. I can add a new wiki and I'll uh, just add uh, the Tilly Wiki pre-release wiki. Uh, and Excellent. Uh, now, I know that Boris is keen on drag and drop, so I wanted to take this chance to also show you um, this is uh, a new TiddlyWiki community resource uh, that we built in the last couple of months. It's no accident that we did this uh, in the time that I've been working with Boris and the team at Fission, who've been uh, fantastically helpful and inspiring on helping me to um, uh, understand the, the infrastructure things that will make a difference to the project. And so here I can, uh, this is a 
it's a, it's a links aggregator. So it relies on uh, individual contributors who maintain their own lists of bookmarks, links to things of interest to the DiddlyWiki community. And then we uh, aggregate them uh, so that you can search for a nice theme and so on. Uh, so a reasonable theme. There was this new one I just saw. Uh, this is a new theme. So I can, so in this window, I've got the, the link to the, 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 to the theme. And over here, I've got my uh, TiddlyWiki on Fission. And, and to install the theme, all I do is drag it across and click import. Uh, and then you can see it's automatically saved changes, but now I'll need to, uh, because TiddlyWiki has switchable themes, I'll need to actually switch to the new theme. Yeah, that looks great. Save those changes. Um, and uh, the sort of thing that uh, I would need to see in a demo is uh, me closing the page and then uh, let's uh, check that everything is really there. So back in my public folder, here's the index file that I just created. And uh, as we can see, it's the wiki with the, um, with the new theme. Uh, yes, not all my demos work, so <laughs> I'm pleased to see that. Uh, <clears throat> and um, uh, I was just gonna show that here, there's also, uh, I chose to put this wiki in the public folder. Um, so uh, I also get a public link um, to that wiki. So now if I go to a different browser uh, that I am uh, not logged into Fission in, um, I still see the same content. So that's uh, uh, pretty stunning for a free platform. It gives us a robust um, uh, publishing workflow for DiddlyWiki. The thing that uh, I'm skirting around and not showing is uh, as part of this work, uh, we also integrated TiddlyWiki's new static site publishing framework, which enables you to use Fission to publish a digital garden. And that's to say where this wiki is, you know, it's a JavaScript thing, um, but we can also generate individual static HTML files, which makes content obviously that's uh, quicker to browse and performs better on search engines. Um, any questions or thoughts? I can't see the chat window from my screen share. Awesome. Yeah, and uh, obviously what's available there, the drive that uh, Jeremy showed, um, if you have all of this under the covers works with um, any existing Tiddly Wikis. So uh, the app that Jeremy has built has been built in such a way that um, you can just drag and drop uh, TiddlyWiki files into Drive to upload them um, and then uh, read them and write them and edit them directly with your Fission credentials. Um, so this should be, uh, and of course, download them again as well. So uh, it works pretty seamlessly within the uh, TiddlyWiki uh, ecosystem. Um, and that's uh, been a lot of the work with, uh, with Jeremy is like, okay, how do we explain this? How do we work with what's going on? How do we move TiddlyWiki forward? And how do we show off what, what Fission can do? Exactly, exactly. Uh, and, yes, and, so sorry. Jury, so, so the way that Fission works, Jury asks, so when you write, the whole wiki file gets updated or per page. If you want to take that one, Jeremy? Yes, no, that, that, that's correct. And this, this is TiddlyWiki's simplest configuration, both technically and conceptually, where everything is stored in a single file. And in many situations, that's by far the most convenient way to have things because you can't separate the bits and, and break it. Um, but uh, uh, the, the, the uh, several bits of several really interesting opportunities with Fission that I've been purposefully def deferring because it's a, well, it's a challenge for all of us. I'm sure that there's so many things to do. I'm very conscious. I don't want to, I want to do a really solid job of the static site publishing. Well, I think we were there with the basic file saving, but then the static site publishing. But then uh, the thing I want to explore is loading and saving individual tiddlers uh, as individual files and uh, being able to reuse or sit on top of Fission's sharing architecture so that things like that 
a link aggregator I showed you that obviously is working over HTTP um, uh, and that wouldn't necessarily be an efficient way of running it if it was aggregating individual items of information it's only because it's grabbing one tiddly wiki file and filleting everything out of it that that's a, a practical uh, way of approaching it so yeah lots of uh, lots to do uh, and um, uh, and as I say the uh, the spur is rather um, uh, here um, is that uh, the API is is really very straightforward and even the most powerful capabilities that have just been exposed um, the, the these APIs for um, creating your own app are again enormous power um, through four or five methods. Um, sorry, any any, any further? Uh, yeah, Mark and Juan asked and, and uh, about the the ACLs and files we create. So so yes, um, as Jeremy said, probably the right direction is going to be a individual tiddler mode. Again, a lot of the simplicity of TiddlerWiki has come about because of um, not wanting to set up a big server infrastructure. And once we expose a file system in the browser, all of a sudden you can actually go back to some of those techniques and uh, potentially have individual Tiddler files, which in turn could have individual permissions uh, from different users um, editing uh, across it. Um, so on, on the roadmap as these things are said, right? Yeah. yeah, and I think I feel very much at the moment we're playing within, you know, the, the kind of best defined sandbox within Fission, but but there's really valuable functionality there as well. Um, there was one more thing, I, uh, if there was time, I wanted to uh, I, uh, uh, be a good opportunity to show, which was um, over here, uh, some work I've been doing for a uh, client in Paris that um, uh, called Immaterial. And they are a, um, they do um, uh, software and services that go in between traditional book publishers and the big book engines, Amazon, um, Google, and Apple, and so on. And so you can imagine they're taking Word files in on one side and pushing out consistent EPUBs uh, at the other. And um, so for, as somebody working with e the EPUB format for the last 15 years, it would be fair to say that they're deeply frustrated with the limitations of it. And so together we've been exploring um, some ideas um, uh, that we think might be interesting. And uh, we're obviously exploring those ideas within TiddlyWiki, but we're not really suggesting that TiddlyWiki should take over the book industry, just that uh, this is a great place to explore the sorts of ideas and to get the kind of plasticity and malleability that might enable the people who can do that to do that. Um, so uh, what it does is uh, it allows you to, to um, well, there's a conversion tool that will convert EPUBs um, to this existing format, uh, to, to this um, TiddlyWiki based format. So if I uh, install a couple of them, um, they, and those are being pulled in off, a, off of the same server, but it's a static server. Um, and then you get a listing of the publications and you can choose to open them uh, in a column and then uh, read them as a parallel, uh, uh, a parallel, what we would call in TiddlyWiki, a parallel story river. So over here is a place where I can make stuff and type stuff, use TiddlyWiki in the normal way, um, where over here um, we've got the publication and I can open multiple uh, publications at once. Um, and um, I, if I uh, select a passage of text in a publication, um, it'll, oh, I did it correctly, uh, it'll create a, an extract um, that allows me to write some notes uh, about that extract. Um, and uh, there's also a, a little bit more flexibility in the way that the columns are laid out. You can add uh, additional, uh, well, actually, let me take that off first. Uh, you can, uh, a publication can be uh, open more than once. So you can see two different parts in the same book for that kind of comparison, squeezy, squeezy sort of stuff. 
Um, uh, the main thing that the conversion process does uh, we, uh, is to cut the public is to cut the material up into chunks. So Tiddlywiki uh, embodies a philosophy that the reason for recording information is to be able to reuse it. And our well, the discovery I'm sure a lot of us have made is that the way to make information reusable is to cut it into small chunks and then thread those chunks back together. And then you can reuse the chunks individually. And so, as you know, EPUBs are, um, uh, are in fact um, uh, HTML documents. So they're highly structured. Um, uh, so what this does is takes a chunk of HTML like that and just cuts it uh, into the separate um, blocks that the browser would see and slices through any overlapping formatting. So it's a very savage, if you're an HTML purist, it's a very savage thing to do to an HTML document. Um, but uh, it means that you can, uh, without limitation, open any of these uh, chunks alongside each other, which obviously in general, um, it's hard to extract a chunk of uh, material from one of these things. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah. That was it, really. Uh, so the, the um, uh, I mentioned that the server in this case is just a static file server. So it's it's another of those things that for for me part of the vision would would be fission because uh, what we're what we're trying to promote is the idea that um, of active reading where we don't just consume books by working through them from beginning to end that, that reading is an active process of disassembling the material and if appropriate setting it aside for reuse we want to build an environment where you can do that where you can you know study multiple um, uh, texts at the same time and work on them and we want people to be able to create their own texts and publish them and set set up their own little libraries like this shared libraries which again you can uh you can readily see how fission removing the traditional barrier to entry to participate in that kind of world by not requiring a server is very powerful when you're talking about the spread of information and knowledge thank you so much i i, I, would, I really appreciate the time to talk about this stuff again I, I, if you uh, any questions thoughts very welcome um don't want to take up all the time there yeah, for sure. That's great. Uh, Mohammed says, uh, uh, do we really want to use the word install for books? <laughs> uh, uh, probably yes. lots of UX tweaks in various spots, right, Jeremy? Uh, yes, no, this is, um, the books are actually plugins um, in TiddlyWiki language. So what you see there is um, a repurposing of the existing interface for how we manage plugins. Um, so uh, to install the plugin, uh, you get. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, that one isn't going to. Uh, that one isn't going to work. Let me do it on here. Uh, if we. Um, so if you install uh, uh, an ordinary plugin, you get essentially the same dialog. So in promote, it's, it's one of the challenges for sure of usability that uh, that you see in systems all over the place that you make a reusable component and then you reuse it and it's not always uh, the the meaning of the component isn't always as independent of context as you'd like. <laughs> yeah, semantic drift. Uh, jury annotations. Yes, I mean all of these things are regular tiddlers. Um, so they they can be linked to and annotated and have backlinks and be tagged yeah. and. Uh, and everything else like that. And I didn't, I didn't really uh, um, uh, perhaps emphasize enough the way that the uh, once I made an annotation that's highlighted here, and I can click there to bring it back. And so uh, that, that 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 we think is um, it. We're obviously trying to meet users' expectations of a traditional ebook reader, where you can select a passage of text to make it go yellow. But we really think of annotations as being two-way links, um, bi-directional links between the tiddler that, that you've written that provides the annotation, and then it links to the chunks of the text that it relates to. And, and it, it's, uh, it's easy to do that in such a way that you can, for instance, here, I can write a note that references extracts from multiple books. And the act of referencing it, um, uh, I mentioned that the publications are plugins. So here's Great Expectations as a plugin, and it's a plugin that contains 
a gazillion tiddle as well, including the images and whatnot that um, uh, that are in the book. Uh, it's plugin containing a gazillion tiddlers, uh, <coughs> and um, uh, but it just works like an ordinary tiddly wiki uh, plugin. So that means if I uninstall the plugin, those tiddlers would disappear. But if I've taken a copy of them, then I would keep them. So it means that you can put in a whole bunch of publications, do stuff, anything that you've kind of touched in the right way. When you throw the books away, you would be left with those bits that you touched. Amazing. Uh, Abraham asks, uh, plans on making this open source? What about PDF? Uh, yes. <laughs> what about PDF? <laughs> so it is already open source. Uh, we've not been... Um, you know, it's not a startup, so we haven't launched it. We've just been working on it, but it's on it's on GitHub <laughs> and it's on the URL that you can that you can see that. And if you click through into documentation, there's a there's a link to um, the GitHub uh, for it. Um, so it, so it is already open source, but that's not entirely, I think, what 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 um, Abraham meant. The um, I'm using it as a test bed to explore ideas for um, the TiddlyWiki core. So there's things like a bit more customizability in the way that these columns work. You can set up multiple story columns and you know typical sort of flexibility that that you would want to see and. That that stuff, uh, I will migrate into the Tiddly Wiki core in due course. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Jeremy. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Applause, applause. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. And back we are to gallery mode. Uh, I will reshare my screen here. Awesome. Uh, to the wiki app, um, and, uh, and you can take existing ones. Uh, I, I should do a test actually. I'll go ahead and grab some of those books and, uh, and bring over that stuff that you have open source and run it in Fission and see what happens. Again, all of this stuff should just work. And, and you can see Jeremy's usual theme of, of you know, taking the opportunity to put things into core, um, which is very much what we want, right? We want to add some capabilities that you can take care of with, uh, with Fission. Um, uh, but work with with core open source communities on that. Um, so other thing that I'm going to announce here, uh, more work to be done on this. Uh, so Jeremy and I have I've very much been collaborating and talking to the Tidlewiki community of, of trying a couple of things. So we have set up an open collective for Tidlewiki on Fission. We have a handful of, of supporters for that now. Um, I want to run the next experiment. Um, so Fission is, you know, the bulk of the work that, that Jeremy has done has been through his uh, consulting company that, that Fission has funded. Uh, but we want to make all of this stuff open source and, and have components over time. Um, I'm a heavy user of TiddlyWiki on Fission. So I have things now that I'd like to see happen uh, that work in core, that work with web native. Um, so basically announcing today that, uh, that I'm going to put some funding into and, and we're going to work on finding a developer who's not Jeremy uh, to build this plugin. Um, uh, right now, images are stored as data URIs and they make the files very, very large. Um, since we've got a file system, we've got IPFS and we've got these persistent links, um, I'd like to see that work where we can drag and drop images, they get resized, they get stored in IPFS, and then you have a tiddler which has this link to the IPFS version, whether it's an image or a PDF or any binary file really, um, um, which obviously is in the direction of sort of individual uh, files. Um, and uh, I've set up a little sub project in the TiddlyWiki on Fission. Um, my goal is a thousand US dollars to kind of do the initial version. I'm actively looking for developers to work on it and we'll do some more promotion and, and uh, I'll release that on the, on the mailing list and the, uh, the TiddlyWiki Discord and so on to spread the word. Uh, please get in touch if this is something that's of interest. Um, if you basically we're gonna, anybody who contributes will prioritize your features and ideas uh, of getting it done. And, you know, I kind of want it done. So I'm personally going to be like, okay, I'm going to, uh, you know, fund a chunk of this. Uh, but uh, who else is interested in following this model of where we can um, support and pool funds to get uh, open source software built?